Hello, from LPL Financial, welcome to The Talking Point. I'm your host, Quincy Crosby. Good morning, everyone. This is Quincy Crosby. It is The Talking Point. It's Monday, September 18th. And this week uh, is following last Friday's uh, triple witching. That is when options, three sets of options, uh, are being unwound. And it's typically a kind of a jarring time for the market. And we saw that on Friday. I, I want to just say in terms of a pattern, doesn't mean it's 100%, but in terms of a pattern, the week following that this kind of witching, that's what we call it, witching, right? Um, options expiration. The following week, which would be this week, can be difficult for the market. Again, it is not 100% uh, certainty. It is just a historical pattern that that's what you typically find. But I, I got, got to stress, it is not a 100% done deal. That it, it doesn't work that way. And, you know, in terms of seasonality, we are in the midst of what's considered to be a difficult time for the market, a difficult time. But it doesn't mean absolutely that, you know, we will end this month, uh, you know, down because of seasonality, negative seasonality. It's just that it is a pattern. So it wouldn't be surprising, nor would it be surprising, by the way, if we turn up towards the end of the month as we move away from this uh, this dicey period. In any case, uh, I'm focused this week on a couple of things. One, I'm going to keep my eye on arm holdings. Arm Holdings had a strong uh, introduction into the market, uh, the initial public offering, the IPO. It will be most likely the um, strongest, uh, biggest uh, IPO for 2023. Uh, what I'm looking for is this. Uh, uh, we saw it pull back at the end of the week, along with the rest of tech. If we, I want to make sure that it stays on track. In other words, the reason it is so important for the market is that investment bankers are watching it. And the reason they're watching it and paying attention is to how it can hold up. And if it does hold up, and at what level and what price does it hold up? And there is a pipeline for further IPOs, initial public offerings. Everyone knows that it has been dormant. Uh, the IPO market has been quiet. Uh, struggling. We had one successful IPO uh, this past summer, and that was Kava, and it was very successful. But what we want to see now is how does Arm Holdings do? And do they hang on to that terrific uh, upsurge in, in the uh, uh, aftermarket? Again, we saw it pull back with the rest of the market. We want to see how it, how it trades this week. And if it does well, you're going to see uh, a series of IPOs coming in. Again, the market waits for a pocket of opportunity and they will take advantage of it if the leadership, which would have been ARM, can hold up even, even if the market sells off. So again, I'm keeping my eye on that. The other thing uh, I want to mention is that last week, the uh, European Central Bank raised rates by 25 basis points. But it is what we call a, it was a dovish uh, uh, rate hike. What do we mean by that? Well, the market's interpretation of it was that, you know what, they're getting really, really close to a long pause or even a peak. That was the market's interpretation. And certainly it was the dollar's interpretation because today, as I do this call, the dollar is gaining strength. And it is something that we call the interest rate differential. In other words, if the European Central Bank seems to be on a path towards finishing up or a long pause, the idea is that what the dollar is looking at is perhaps seeing a different scenario here in the U.S. as the Fed meets this week. The expectations are that we are going to see a pause. That has been the expectation for some time. But the question is, how is it packaged? Does the Fed come out and say, uh, you know, we acknowledge that the growth in the U.S. economic backdrop, backdrop is still solid? Uh, and do they mention that perhaps prices are rising? 
or does it they do they come out and say well you know the the economy it, it isn't as resilient as you would think we don't know what that dot plot is going to be look like and we don't know what the statement is going to look like but we knew the data uh and we're showing that the consumer remains resilient although much more deliberate in our spending that's still spending uh still fairly healthy, although in the last read, which we saw last week, a bit of the spending is going into the gasoline stations. I wonder why, right? Gasoline prices climbing higher. But also, and I, this, this I think is important, it has to do with the notion of whether or not we see a hawkish pause as opposed to a dovish pause. And what's the difference? A hawkish pa pause would mean that between the statement between the dot plot, but also very important is the press conference in which Jerome Powell answers questions. Do we leave that meeting, this Fed meeting this week with the idea that the Fed, data dependent as it is, may still be in play for another rate hike this year? That's what you, that's what is a hawkish pause. Or do they allow the market to believe that, you know what? We could be on pause for a really long time. That would, of course, be a softest pause. But as long as the market believes that the Fed will be much more hawkish than the European Central Bank was, the dollar rises. And we call that, in, in the economic world, the interest rate differential. And right now, with the dollar rising, it's as if the market is saying, that's where we think that the Fed is going to be, delivering a hawkish pause. So we have that this week. We also have the Bank of Japan. And that is really important too for us in the United States. The reason is that the Bank of Japan uses a mechanism called yield curve control to keep the yields down, right? They push the yields down by buying a lot of bonds and they push the yields down. We know that they are looking at the future and they are seeing that inflation, which is what they want after all these years of deflation, they are seeing inflation take hold at a level that is appropriate, that they believe is appropriate. 2%, same 2% as European Central Bank wants as price stability, the United States. But they want to be ensured that it is not an anomaly, that it is more and more entrenched, that, that the Japanese uh, businesses and population see that inflation is taking hold. Again, the good inflation rather than, you know, hyperinflation. And why is this important? Because as they move towards unwinding that yield curve control, uh, their yields are going to go up in the bonds. And where does it affect us here in the U.S.? The concern is that if they, let's say they pulled the Band-Aid off of the of that mechanism, yield curve control, their yields will climb high. And, and the Japanese, which by the way, are the largest buy, foreign buyers of U.S. treasuries, would cease to buy because they get the yield back home. They don't need our yield. And that would be disconcerting for the market. Or there's an even deeper fear, which it's probably unrealized, but it's still a fear. And that is that the Japanese may sell their holdings here in the United States, albeit they wouldn't sell it all at once, but sell it enough to return it home where they also can get a yield. What does that do here? The concern is it pushes our yields higher. And that's why what happens at the Bank of Japan matters to us here in the United States. Obviously, at some point, they are going to dismantle yield curve control, but they will probably do it in a more more um, ex executed in a in a more modest way, so to speak, so that you're not shocking uh, all all of the markets. And also this week, besides the Fed, before, besides the Bank of Japan, we actually have a host of numbers data releases. Uh, with regard to the housing market. And this is going to be very important as mortgage rates uh, climb higher. So we're going to pay attention to what they have to say uh, in terms of the National Association of Home Builders. That, that's a report that's coming in. Uh, a number, again, a, a host of real estate related data releases. Also this week, we will have 
two, I think, important um, earnings reports. One will be from FedEx. And the reason I pay very close attention to UPS, for example, and FedEx is they give me a sense of what's moving, what's moving in the country. And, and that gives you a sense of a glimpse of, of the economy. And that's why we pay attention to uh, both of those companies. So FedEx, obviously, folks who are investing in it are going to pay attention to it, you know, different, different um, uh, parts of the report. But I'm going to be looking at it in terms of what do they see in terms of the economy. And certainly they are a big player uh, in terms of movement of, of uh, packages. So we'll listen, we'll listen to that. The other one that's coming to, um, uh, for the earnings report is Darden. And Darden, as you know, has a number of different um, brands. And I'm curious whether people are going out to eat. And if so, where? Are they going to the low end of that of the brands that they, Darden has? But it is important. It gives us a glimpse of the U.S. consumer. And by the way, this would be a U.S. consumer that has been spending ever since the end of COVID, uh, going out to eat and enjoying life again. And we'll see if that's continuing. So we'll hear what the guidance is in both FedEx and also Darden. And, and again, they will differentiate their brands. We'll know which ones uh, Americans are, um, are visiting. So it's going to be an extremely busy week for the market, but I'd have to say the key this week is certainly the Fed. But I wanna repeat, the Fed is expected to keep us on hold, a pause. So what the market is focused on is, again, what do we extrapolate from the statement, even from the so-called dot plot, and but especially from Chairman Powell? The Fed wants to be seen as data dependent, but as I finish up this call, the U.S. dollar is suggesting as it rises against other currencies, particularly the euro, the U.S. dollar is suggesting that the Fed could very well deliver a hawkish pause. So a lot riding on this uh, this week, so much in terms of data and so much in terms of still two more uh, important um, earnings reports. But above all else, it is about the Fed and the probability that the market points to in terms of a potential rate hike for November or December. And that's what we, we want to pay attention to. And you'll see that the Fed Funds futures market, in terms of probability, will start moving almost immediately after the Fed um, is finished, and particularly after Chairman Powell is finished, to, to adjust those probabilities in terms of a rate hike or no rate hike for uh, November and December. Busy week. Pay attention to, please, um, the U.S. dollar and, um, and, again, the Fed. Thank you so much. We'll be back next week. This material was prepared by LPL Financial. It's for general information only and is not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. There is no assurance that the views or strategies discussed are suitable for all investors or will yield positive outcomes. Investing involves risks, including possible loss of principal. Any economic forecast set forth in the podcast may not develop as predicted and are subject to change. References to markets, asset classes, and sectors are generally regarding the corresponding market index. All indexes are unmanaged and cannot be invested into directly. Index performance is not indicative of the performance of any investment and do not reflect fees, expenses, or sales charges. All performance reference is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All information referenced in the podcast is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor and broker-dealer, member FINRA and SIPC. Insurance products are offered through LPL or its licensed affiliates. To the extent you are receiving investment advice from a separately registered independent investment advisor that is not an LPL affiliate, please note LPL makes no representation with respect to such entity. If your financial professional is located at a bank or credit union, please note 
note that the bank or credit union is not registered as a broker dealer or investment advisor. Registered representatives of LPL may also be employees of the bank or credit union. These products and services are being offered through LPL or its affiliates, which are separate entities from and not affiliates of the bank or credit union. Securities and insurance offered through LPL or its affiliates are not insured by the FDIC or NCUAA or any other government agency, not bank or credit union guaranteed, not bank or credit union deposits or obligations, and may lose value.